It's taken me 11 months, but I finally watched all 60 Disney animation films in the year 2021. And today I'm gonna give you my picks for the 20 best Disney movies. So let's talk about it. Sean and I love to talk about movies way too much. With that in mind, go ahead and join me down below in the comment section. Share your picks for the 20 best Disney movies. My list isn't the right list, it's just my list and I would love to see yours. Also, this is part three of a three-part series, so you can check out the other parts at this card right up here where I talk about the other 40 movies in the Disney canon. Speaking of the Disney canon, this is a ranking of the official Disney canon. That is the movies put out by Walt Disney Animation Studios. Disney as a whole has multiple different studios that put out animated films, for example, Pixar, but also movies like A Goofy Movie, The DuckTales Movie, and all the direct-to-video sequels to movies that are a part of the Disney canon. Those are put out by different film studios than Walt Disney Studio Animation Studios, therefore they're not part of the Disney canon, thus not included in this list. And here's my picks for the 20 best. Kicking off our top 20, The Mini Adventures of Winnie the Pooh. A simple, breezy children's tale from a very different era that instead of valuing spectacle and size, was all about telling a clever and witty story. It's also very meta, 40 years before Deadpool made it cool to be meta. It has all these clever ways in which it plays into the fact that it's an adaptation of a book and it structures its narrative and its storytelling all around the fact that we are bringing a book to life and it just makes for a very unique cinematic experience while being very small in size in another way. All of the dialogue is just filled with wit and cleverness, playfulness, so it's not a gigantic story but it is a very enjoyable one. Number 19, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Now this is a bit of a tricky one to rank because this is the original feature length animated movie. It was absolutely groundbreaking. It's a classic and it laid the foundation that every animated movie over the last 80 years has built on top of and built upon its legacy. It's jam packed with a whole bunch of songs and images that have just become part of the popular culture. Each of our dwarves have uh, are memorable, iconic so much so that it's one of those questions, can you name all seven of the dwarves for a movie that came out over 80 years ago. At the same time, it's compared to modern day, the storytelling is simplistic and episodic in certain sort of ways and clunky in the way that it kind of closes things out. And so while absolutely this is one of the most important, or not possibly the most important animated film of all time, certainly over the last 80 years, a number of movies have come along that have been more entertaining or easier to watch. So while this is probably the most important film on this list, I can't put it all the way up at the top. Next up, Alice in Wonderland, a gleefully episodic and dreamlike adventure. It absolutely captures the wit and the wordplay of the Lewis Carroll source material, and it is just jam-packed with these iconic sequences and characters that everybody recognizes. And so many of the sequences, even though I hadn't seen this movie in years, I realized I had the whole thing memorized from having seen it so many times before and because it's written in such a catchy fashion. Likewise, it hops around with this energetic, witty vibe to it that it captures so much of the 21st century ADHD storytelling that a lot of the movies of the last decade have had. At the same time, it doesn't necessarily have the best forward narrative momentum to kind of propel it higher up to the top levels of this list, but certainly one of these movies that everybody needs to see, and once you've seen it, you remember it. Number 17, Zootopia. Now this is a movie that when I first saw the trailer, I thought, eh, this one might end up being a bit of a dud, but still, I took my kids to go see it. In fact, this was the very first movie my kids saw in the theater, and it absolutely won me over with its creative mix of the buddy cop genre with Disney animation. Like at its core, this is a buddy cop movie where there's an investigation, the odd couple pairing, that if it was an action comedy would feel a little bit stale, but because it's combined with cute animals, 
it's something fresh and different inside of the Disney canon. And it's also a movie that's very much about prejudice and not judging people by their exterior. And that combination makes it something special. Special. Certainly the messaging can get a little bit heavy handed at certain points in time, but it's a good message, it's a clear message, and it fits the story that they're telling. There's also a bunch of laugh out loud sequences, in particular the one with the sloth at the DMV. We are in a really big hurry. I am on it break. But the glue holding it all together is that it's just jam-packed with a great set of characters that you enjoy, that you want to spend more time with them on this adventure. And whether it's because it was the first movie that my kids saw in the theater or just because they loved it, they put this movie on all the time and absolutely love it. And it's a movie they watch on repeat that doesn't drive me crazy. 16, Big Hero 6. Now this is one of the least Disney feeling Disney animation films of all time. And in the case of this movie, that's not a bad thing at all. In true Disney fashion, they found a way to take a Marvel comic and adapt it into a story about finding friendship and family in an unusual place and telling a heartwarming story while having all the big action set pieces that you want from a Marvel comic adaptation. At its core, what makes it work is that you really believe in these characters and they came up with a great villain. Our lead two characters have a great bond and friendship between the two of them. Baymax in particular is absolutely adorable. But then they give us a villain that has twists, turns, and reveals related to him. But they also give him a motivation that you can understand where he's coming from. So he's not just a mustache villain, twirling villain trying to do evil. There's something driving his actions and it leads to a very heartfelt conclusion at the end of it. So this is one of these movies that feels kind of strange that it is part of the Disney canon, but that doesn't at all mean it's not a really solid film. Then we have Mulan. In many ways, this is my type of story and adventure. It's a martial arts epic involving someone discovering their inner strength, stepping out to be a hero, taking a chance, all leading to a big climactic finale. That's my kind of movie. So naturally, this is a movie that's very easy for me to sit down and watch. Add to that, you've got a bunch of classic Disney songs, and especially during the Renaissance, they were just so good at telling great stories and including a bunch of catchy numbers into the mix. Now, this isn't a movie that I watched when it first came out because I was just I was in that phase where I wasn't watching a lot of animated movies when I was in high school. So I've more discovered this film over the last few years since I've had my own children that are starting to discover the Disney canon. Likewise, since the new Mulan came out, I've watched this movie multiple times since then and learned to appreciate it even more so. Coming in at number 14, Atlantis, The Lost Empire. Now this is a movie that I had never seen until just a couple years ago when I was ranking that era of Disney films. Check this one out and absolutely fell in love with it. It's kind of like a mix of Stargate, Avatar, and Indiana Jones, and I say all of that as a positive because it's just this great adventure story. The score is fantastic. There's a great mythology and world that you want to explore. Twist turns, all the stuff that make for a great blockbuster. Of course, over the last five years, Disney has been going wild crazy, adapting all of their older films that are animated into live action films. I feel like this is actually a prime candidate to do that, both because of the nature of the story, also because this was a movie that underperformed at the box office. And I think the technology is caught up to be able to turn this into a great PG-13 adventure film that would even make the story better. Number 13, Raya and the Last Dragon. Now this is a movie that when I very first saw the trailer, I thought, that's a movie I'm probably really gonna like. And when I checked it out, I did. Then I asked my daughter about it and she said it was her favorite movie of all time. Hey Chloe, mm -hmm. what's your favorite movie? Raya and the Last Dragon. Woo! And I think this is just a great, original story. They built out this mythology about all these kingdoms and the conflicts between them that you buy into the world. You want to learn more about what's going on. But beyond that, I think what pulls it together is that they have a hero with weaknesses and a villain that's sympathetic. You understand both of their motivations and why they're coming into conflict and what's driving them to make the choices that they're making that are 
escalating the conflict, but also w moving towards the resolution. The characters were great, the world was one that I wanted to explore, and the action itself was visceral and exciting. There's actually some videos about there about how they did the motion capture for it. Very cool, exciting stuff. All of it making for a great, great animated film. Next up, Sleeping Beauty, one of the most stunningly animated films of all time. It's truly incredible what they were able to accomplish over 60 years ago with this film. Features one of the great Disney villains of all time with Maleficent, and it's jam-packed with these classic, iconic Disney images, all leading up to this slam-bang finale with the prince battling a dragon and through a wall of thorns. All exciting, very cool stuff. And it might feel a little bit old-fashioned to have a prince trying to save a princess, but at the same time, there's a reason that it's resonated with boys and girls for generations at this point in time. Now, at, at the same time, I feel like Aurora and the prince are a little bit generic, and if they were as captivating as Maleficent was, this movie probably would jump up into my top five. Number 11, Frozen, a spellbinding mix of irresistible characters, catchy songs, and truly laugh out loud moments. It propelled this film to becoming the highest grossing animated film of all time, and instantly, the songs and characters become icons of pop culture. They're memorable, they're quotable, and they're sing-alongable. I think I invented a word there. It's the kind of movie that gets the specifics so right that you forgive its many faults. Especially when it comes to the story and storytelling, it's a little bit clunky and uneven. Like there's seven songs in the first 35 minutes of the movie, and there's only two in the next hour. And all the great ones are in the first 35 minutes of the movie. Definitely has some pacing issues where it slows down in the middle. Some of the best characters aren't introduced until halfway through the movie. There's a lot of kind of repeated plot beats inside of it. But at the same time, None of that really matters all that much when you have so many characters that are absolutely adorable that you want to spend time with in so many fantastic songs. And in fact, one of the songs in here is my backup karaoke song. This is a perfect example of an imperfect story getting a huge boost from fantastic execution. Bringing us into the top 10, 101 Dalmatians. Now this movie was such a pleasant surprise on rewatch. I of course know the story, I've seen it many times before, but rewatching it, I was just captivated by how it's storytelling is so simple, but effective. And that's what this movie does so well. There's no extraneous subplots. It's a simple story told in five parts so incredibly well. It's a movie that's not afraid to use silence. Like when at the beginning where they think one of the puppies has died, the movie goes silent. You can just imagine if they told this story again today, the music would be swelling, it'd be this big gigantic moment. This movie knows it's more effective to just go silent and sit and the emotion and the dread. Likewise, as you kind of move into the narrative, it does just a great job of using small, simple details to set up the important characteristics of the puppies and the different characters. Like one of the puppies is clearly established early on to like to watch TV, which later in the movie comes back around when they're trying to escape and he keeps wanting to watch TV. Simple setup payoff is what leads to the conflict rather than forced and contrived scenarios. It's also a movie that's like 40% a stealth movie, which is, I didn't realize that about the film, but it works as this escape film during the second half of it. So while it's one of these movies that isn't nearly as flashy as the modern Disney films, it's top-notch execution of what it's going for. There's faster-paced movies, there's ones with super-duper catchy songs and tons of jokes, but that doesn't make them more effective than a cute story about 101 Dalmatians. Number nine, Tarzan. This is another one that came out when I was in high school, so I never saw it until just a couple years ago and immediately thoroughly enjoyed it. Right off the bat, I love the animation style for this movie. The colors are bold and vibrant. The animation is so 
fluid as he's swinging through the trees and everything. What they were able to do here with modern technology plus hand-drawn 2D animation, this is a look that I absolutely love. From there, Tarzan and Jane are just a fun, adventurous couple that you buy into them, their relationship, and the adventures that they get swept up on. Likewise, I appreciate that they didn't get pretentious with the story. They stuck to the pulpy material and they didn't try and lion size the scope and size of the story. It's a fairly simple adventure where you have threat, danger, risk, urgency, all of that, but it's not trying to tell the biggest story of all time. Because of that, it's able to just sit as a solid, highly watchable adventure. Then we have Frozen 2. After six years in hibernation, Anna and Elsa return, and I think this one's just a little bit better than the original. Because all of the lead characters are already established at the beginning, it's able to tell a more focused story that balances the characters better, thus it's able to go deeper in with their relationships in a powerful and meaningful way. Also, I think it wisely just doubles down on the mythology of this world and everything that's been going on with Elsa and their family history. The world is bigger, the danger more palpable, and the magic more intriguing. And it leads to this great sequence where Elsa rides off to discover who she is and one of the most emotional little sequences in any Disney film, at least in the Chandler household. Now, I wish the movie had a better threat for the third act, and really that's my only gripe with this movie. Otherwise, I think it's just a great Disney fantasy film filled with great songs and characters I love to spend time with. Number seven, Tangled. Disney's return to the classic formula paid off. Sometimes you want fresh and subversive, and other times you need a classic formula executed with excellence, and that's what they did here. At its core, it's about a princess who's been held captive her entire life, and then you have an outlaw who's lived freely for himself his entire life, and the mix and the two of them together leads to a bunch of humor, action, and hijinks, and it's the perfect combination of characters. As always, the songs are catchy, fun, and get stuck in your head, but really for me, the thing that elevates this one is that as you move into the third act of the film and Rapunzel starts to discover who she is, her true lineage, and then that meeting with her and her parents, I think that is so emotionally powerful, and they don't even need to say a word when she meets her parents. Just the looks on their faces says everything that they need to do. So in this case, this is an example of where going back to the formula is exactly what they need, and they did a great job at it. That'll bring us to Cinderella, the classic story that everyone knows, but it's told with such elegance in a memorable way, so all the little details pop out. The songs are catchy and memorable, the little side characters like the mice and the cat stand out, and everyone knows the plot beats because it's such a classic underdog story where you have Cinderella, someone that's very easy to root for, and her stepsisters and stepmother that are very easy to despise and not like at all. And it just creates a setup that leads to a wonderful payoff. In many ways, this is the definitive film version of this story that's been told many, many times before. Kicking off our top five, Wreck-It Ralph. Now this is a movie that feels more like Pixar should have put it out, but who cares? It's a great, great film. The central concept involves us learning about the personal lives of characters inside of computers, which many movies have tried to do over the last decade. Hello darkness, my old friend. But Wreck-It Ralph absolutely destroyed the competition in that regard. The central concept about an arcade where all of the characters live together and the villains have a support group, that's just witty and fun. Beyond that, it just feels like a really nicely constructed script jam-packed with fun sequences, but also themes about knowing and accepting who you are. And when you put it all together, it just makes for a movie that it feels like they really thought through every little sequence, every character, so that they pay off really nicely, all while being a ton of fun. And when Ralph thinks he needs to wreck a cart, the sequence will in fact wreck your heart. Hey, that rhymed. 
I'm a poet and I didn't even know it. But the real magic here is that it's a movie with characters that you enjoy and you enjoy spending time with. And there's a ton of great cameos all along the way. It's fun, it's funny, it's heartfelt, it's great. In fourth place, Peter Pan, a movie that from beginning to end is iconic and memorable. At its core, it's this playful, dreamlike adventure involving pirates and Indians and children flying and swashbuckling, all kinds of fun stuff that children dream about, and it turns it into an adventure, all while tying in these themes about not wanting to grow up and the value of responsibility. It has a clear message, but it never feels the need to bonk you over the head with it. Just perfectly captures childlike imagination and playfulness. Real quick before I give you my top three, remember to join me down below in the comments section. Share your picks for the 20 best Disney animation films. My list isn't the right list, it's just my list and I would love to see yours. Also remember this is part three of a three part series where I ranked all 60 Disney animation films. You can check out the other two parts right up here. Also I've done a bunch of these big gigantic animation rankings before. You can check the others out in the playlist right up here like DreamWorks, Pixar, all that fun stuff in that playlist. Kicking off our top three, Aladdin. Now this is easily one of the most fun films on this entire list, in large part because Robin Williams gives such a high energy, hilarious and memorable performance as the genie. He is just a ball of charisma and joy in every single sequence that he's in. But even if Robin Williams wasn't the genie in this movie, it's still a rock solid adventure jam packed with great songs, chases, fights, magic, all the stuff that you want from a Disney film. Speaking of the songs, they're all great. Growing up, I actually had the soundtrack for this one on a tape and I had the version before they changed the lyrics to Arabian Nights. Where they cut off your ear, they don't like your face. It's barbaric, but hey, it's home. And this movie contains my go-to karaoke song. I can show you the world. A shining, shimmering, splendid. No one can tell us more. Now I was the absolute perfect age to be the target audience for this film when it first came out. It was an absolute blast 30 years ago and to this day, it's still an amazing experience. Our runner-up is Beauty and the Beast, the first animated film ever nominated for Best Picture, absolutely holds up 30 years later. The entire film was created with this sense of elegance and gravitas that just elevates the entire film. It makes it seem like they knew they were making something special as they created it. And that's not to say that it's devoid of the usual Disney humor. No, it's filled with quirky and fun side characters that add just enough humor all throughout the entire film, manages to perfectly balance sophistication with fun. The characters are great and the story at its core is about redemption and romance, so much so that you're able to buy into the Stockholm Syndrome romantic story at the core of the movie. At its core, it's not just a great Disney animation film and it's not just a great animated film, it's simply one of the great films of all time. But coming in at number one is The Lion King. Here, Disney goes full Shakespeare and the results are fantastic. From the opening shot to the closing credits, the entire film is just filled with these gorgeous shots that are massive in size. All the characters are interesting and bring something unique to the film. They're designed in a way where everyone has something memorable about them, where you're able to remember their personality, what they care about, and give them some moment where they stand out. And that's in particularly impressive because of how large the cast is for this film. Of course, the songs are fantastic, but the score from Hans Zimmer is equally memorable, iconic, and emotional. The movie's also just jam-packed with deep themes about responsibility, regret, growing up, dealing with our mistakes. So while it can entertain the youngest of children, its rich themes can pull out big emotions from any adult. Aside from one fart joke too many, this is basically a perfect film. Therefore, it comes in at 
at number one. If you enjoyed this video, remember it's part three of a three-part series. You can check out the other two parts right over there. And if you want my ranking of other animated franchises, that is right down below me. I've got DreamWorks, Pixar, Illumination, and more. Thank you so much for watching, and keep talking movies too much.